My neighbor runs a small daycare in her home. She is a very nice person, and I wonder why such horrible things could be happening in her home. In the beginning, she was so excited, and I went over a few times to help her get the different rooms and areas ready for opening day. My favorite room is the infant's room, and I guess it's also favorite to whoever is haunting the place. Two years ago, I would have never imagined I'd be writing this. Sandy, my neighbor, moved in about two years ago, and we hit it off right away. She had right away mentioned that she had the intention of opening a daycare, and I thought it was a marvelous idea. Soon after, it was official, and I was helping her move in all kinds of cute furniture and things for the kids to play with. She was mostly going to have infants and toddlers, so I also helped her set up lots of baby swings, high chairs, and bassinets. She was a single mom herself, so the kids' company would do her good. Sandy got busy with her daycare, so I'd only see her if she made her way over in the evenings or on the weekends. She'd sit and tell me all about her kids and what they do or say until one summer day last year. Sandy came over and she was looking a bit flustered and worried. She caught her breath from rushing over and left her teen daughter in charge for a few minutes. Sandy started telling me that some weird things had recently started happening in the daycare. She told me that about a week before, she had all the kids asleep and she was prepping for their lunch. She started hearing kids laughing, but she couldn't recognize the laughs. She made her way to the kids, and she saw they were all asleep. She checked in on the babies also asleep in their bassinets, and they were also sound asleep. The moment she got back to the kitchen, she heard the laughing again, followed by some chattering. She once again stopped what she was doing and walked over to the kids. The older kids were all sleeping still, but when she walked into the baby room, one of the bassinets was swinging. She walked up to check on the baby, but the swinging bassinet was the only one that she hadn't put a baby to sleep in. She got creeped out, but she blamed it on the wind, although everything was shut closed. Sandy then told me that what had made her rush over was even creepier. She told me that all the kids were playing outside with her daughter, meanwhile she caught up to some paperwork. She then heard the sliding door open and heard one of the kids run into the house. She didn't look up because she thought they'd just come in to use the bathroom. She confirmed she was right when she could hear the bathroom faucet. It had been running for longer than usual now, so she got up to check in on whoever went to the bathroom. She knocked a couple times and asked if they were okay in there. The water kept running and she got no answer. She knocked again and asked if they needed help. She heard the water turn off and the doorknob getting jiggled. Sandy stood back to greet the child that was going to come out any second now, but the doorknob kept jiggling harder and faster, making the door rattle. Sandy reached out to it and to her surprise the jiggling stopped. She then turned it and the door was unlocked. She opened the door slowly and she was greeted by a completely empty bathroom. She stood back in astonishment and had a million thoughts rush into her head. Sandy went out to tell her daughter she'd be right back and that's when she came over. She just didn't know what to do. I looked at Sandy and I didn't have any suggestions for her either. 
I asked if she had a moment for coffee and we sat down to brainstorm. I asked Sandy if she had any sort of surveillance. She nodded her head no, and I urged her to start looking into it as soon as possible. She'd only been running the daycare a few months, so she was still figuring things out. Sandy and I went together, and she purchased a couple of baby monitors that also had a live feed of the room where you placed them. As a temporary surveillance, I thought they'd do great. And also just put Sandy's mind at ease. A few days went by and Sandy and I bumped into each other in our driveways. Sandy then told me her baby monitors had caught a few things falling when the rooms were empty, and she'd also seen the baby bassinets moving, well into the night when all the kids were gone. Sandy also mentioned she had started seeing shadows float by from the corner of her eye. I was starting to get worried about Sandy, but there wasn't much I could do. I could just listen and comfort her but I could see how this was turning into a big part of Sandy's life. A few weeks later, Sandy came over and she started catching me up of what had been going on at the daycare. She told me she had gotten a new infant that needed care in the evenings, and since she was always home anyway she decided to care for the baby. The baby wouldn't get picked up till about 10 p.m., so Sandy just kept the monitors going all day and night now. The baby was pretty good with their sleep schedule, so by 8 p.m., Sandy basically had two hours to herself until they came to pick up the baby. Sandy then settled into her seat and looked at me with wide eyes. She then told me that two nights before, after the baby had gone to sleep, she was folding her laundry in the living room, and that she'd look at the live baby monitor every so often. She says she heard baby breathe really heavy for a few seconds, then she heard a growling sound almost like static, as if something had growled right into the monitor in the infant room. She looked at the baby monitor screen and Sandy couldn't believe her eyes. She says that she saw a tall black shadow standing over the baby's bassinet. The baby kept breathing weird and the black figure in the screen kept bending over deeper and deeper into the bassinet. Sandy threw the clothes she was folding and ran into the infant room only to find the baby sound asleep. She bent over and placed her hand on the baby's chest and felt them breathe peacefully a few times. Sandy looked up at the monitor and saw the lights flickering on it, which meant there was noise or movement. She wasn't surprised since she was there. She walked back into the hallway and then heard the baby's parents ringing her doorbell. The very next night, Sandy brought out a bassinet into her living room so she could read and keep an eye on baby as soon as they fell asleep. Right on schedule, baby fell asleep around 8 p.m. and Sandy laid the baby on the bassinet. She started reading her book and unintentionally started dozing off. Between head bobs, Sandy would look over at the sleeping baby and tried to wake up. Sandy then started seeing a dark shadow from the corner of her eye standing by the wall. She was still dozing off, and each time she'd open her eyes, the dark shadow got closer and closer to them. She was startled by the baby crying hysterically, and she realized she'd been asleep a few minutes. She got up and checked on the baby, she pulled the baby's blanket down, and she found the baby fast asleep, with no sign they'd been crying at all. Sandy went to grab a glass of water, and as she drank it, she saw a dark figure watching her from the living room. She put her glass down and walked over to the baby monitor that was paired to the living room. She could see the bassinet and the baby sleeping soundly. 
Suddenly the baby's blanket flew off and a dark shadow appeared into the screen. The screen started glitching and she ran over to the living room. The floor lamp, which she'd been reading under, began to flicker and then the light bulb burst. She quickly made her way to grab the baby and grabbed it. She started going upstairs, avoiding any shards of glass from the burst light bulb and as she started going upstairs, she heard banging on the walls following her up the staircase. She made it to her room, shutting the door behind her and hugging the baby with all her might. She then sat on her bed, rocking the baby so they don't wake up. She couldn't hear anything else from downstairs and the baby's parents were due any minute now. Sandy opened her door and looked down the hall. She made her way downstairs and saw her living room was intact. Her floor lamp on, no glass anywhere. She couldn't believe her eyes, and when she was about to touch the bulb her doorbell rang. I sat holding my cup of coffee and Sandy looked at me with a face I'd never seen on her. She was genuinely frightened and worried. I told her to maybe shut down for a while and to maybe go on a vacation. To leave the house and to keep her mind busy with something else. Sandy agreed and excused herself. About three weeks ago, Sandy came to tell me that she was going to be gone for two weeks and asked me if I could keep an eye on her place. I agreed and wished her well on her travels. Sandy gave me a spare key, but I'm not willing to go in there unless I absolutely have to. The first week she was gone, nothing caught my eye from her place. But just a day or two ago, I saw some of her lights were on in the second floor, and I could have sworn I saw her walk around in her bedroom and living room. I just thought Sandy was back, she must have not given me the exact date she was coming back on. I shrugged it off and paid no mind to it. This morning though, I got a call. The call was from Sandy, and she told me that she wasn't coming back until next week because she had made a mistake booking her flight back home. I was baffled since I thought she was already home. I told her I'd keep an eye on her place and to take care and hung up. Although I don't think I need to, since the dark shadow figure seems to be doing it already.